Hello, welcome back to the Spectrosonics Omnisphere tutorial. Today we're having a look at the arpeggiator, quite a fun little module. And that giving us a slightly softer sound to play with because we're going to be hearing lots of notes today so you don't particularly want a brash kind of sawtooth smashing away at your brain. I've also increased the velocity sensitivity a little bit to make it easier to hear the difference in volume of the keys. Other than that, totally stock sound. I'll turn the arpeggiator on and then play a chord. I'm going to play C, E, G. Now it just so happens that I ended up playing C, G, E. And can you hear it playing the notes in that order? If I played it slightly more accurately, now it's playing them up. If I played them down instead, it plays them down. The reason for all of that is because we're currently in as played mode. So we've got all these different patterns that we can choose from in how the arpeggio gets played. So if I choose up and down, C, E, G, E, C. Up and down with a little plus sign repeats the upper and lower notes. Uh, most of them are pretty obvious. I won't go through the entire list. Join is a little bit tricky. This starts from the outside and works, works its way in. I'll play five notes. One, five, two, four, three. And spread is the opposite. Starts on the inner note and works its way out. But they're all variations on the theme, just the different order in which the notes are going to get played. Let's settle on up and down and stick uh, stick there for a while. Let's have a look at this uh, pattern editor down here, see what's going on. Firstly, we've got up to 32 steps to play with, but by default it sets it at, uh, at four, and these bars represent velocity. So if I do this kind of business, on this particular sound, this might not be particularly dramatic. You can hear it pulsing in volume. But this um, velocity slider here specifies how much we tend towards the key press, how hard the key's being pressed, and how much we accentuate the velocity bars as drawn by the arpeggiator. So over here, it's entirely dependent on how hard I hit the keys. You're hearing everything at a constant volume. On this side of the scale, we'll get this slope. see that in the oscill oscilloscope pretty obviously. So that's the velocity bars taken care of, that's nice and easy. What about these little lights underneath? Well we can turn entire sections off. Now something that's a little bit fiddly, I'm not a huge fan of the interface here, if you double click you join these two notes together. So this pattern, this note that gets played will now occupy twice the length of the other notes. We can also control the length of each of the notes from a relative control up here. We have a, a length knob. As I bring it down, you can see the ratio of each of those notes is still consistent, but the lengths of the notes are all changing. Let's make the pattern a bit bigger, give ourselves a bigger playground. Okay, and now we're going to start having some fun because above each of these velocity bars is a secret menu. <laughs> you don't have to know to just click in the blackness. Basically, each one of these um, pattern columns can be uh, configured with a different attribute. So let's uh, increase the pitch of that particular note by 12, but there's tons of stuff to go at. You can add little slides. Let's slide up seven semitones here. Uh, and we'll have these two notes played as entire chords. So we're basically subverting the arpeggio nature of the sequence. And we're going to say, no, play all of the notes for those bits there. What else have we got? High and low uh, specifies ignore the pattern, 
just play the lowest note that's been played. So if I'm playing C, E, G, it's going to play a C here and it's going to play a G there. And over on this big fat note at the beginning, we're going to use a step divider. And what this means is it splits that individual segment up into multiple little slices. So let's have a step divider four with a rise. So it's going to do that little kind of sequence. Now let's see what we've got. So you can hear the, the plus 12, the octave note being played. You can hear the little slide, the seven semitone slide. A couple of notes being played as four chords. And then the diddle diddle din din for the, uh, for the divider at the beginning. So it's just immense fun playing with these little tools and incredibly intuitive. You just generate interesting uh, patterns really easily. I love the slides. I play with the slides a lot and you can kind of connect them together to do really weird kind of fruity things. Let's have a minus seven in there. Let's see what that does. So just really, really good fun. We've got a couple of speed controls. We've got our speed knob, which is like pretty self-evident. Just does exactly what you would expect it to. But we can also control the speed from our fractional control over here. So if I set it to 30 second, it's going to play the sequence twice as fast. This next control that currently says legato is all about how uh, how the pattern re-triggers. So at the moment, if I hold something down and keep adding new notes, just keep adding them in. If I switch to note mode instead, now every time I play a new note, it's gonna restart the pattern. And to demonstrate song position, I've just zoomed out a bit and given us an eight bar part. But basically, wherever the song position is, the pattern will fall in sync. So it jumped immediately to the point that was sympathetic with the current beat of the song. Everything that we've done so far has been in loop mode, where it just goes round and round and round. If we put it in chaos mode, it just picks randomly. What the next step is going to be and in once it literally just plays it once and then stops that can be really interesting for like trill effects you could um like plug a, a glissando in and play it and it will play it as a pattern and then stop it won't do it twice how many octaves do we want? Everything that we've done has just been the actual raw notes played. That's what one octave means. But we can add more octaves in. So three octaves, the original octave plus two more. I'll just uh, simplify the pattern a little bit to demonstrate this because it can be a bit brain bending. So it's doing an up and down over three octaves. I bring the full pattern back in you'll see that it becomes pretty quickly and difficult to track what's going on I kind of missed that little step thing at the beginning madness latch means i don't have to hold the keys down I just hit the three keys on the keyboard and then until i press some new keys it's going to carry on doing that. In fact, in legato mode, I can just keep on adding notes into the arpeggio. It just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> Excellent. Then we have swing. Um, I've done an entire video on, I won't try to explain what swing is now, but basically it's a shifting of the time-based pattern of the song. I'll stick a link to the, um, uh, I have a, a pretty comprehensive discussion of this concept, but it basically makes the arpeggio swing. I'm a big fan of subtle amounts of swing. I think too much is kind of not a great thing.
So that all came from our brain, but why don't we use Spectrosonic's brain instead? So we can choose from any of these presets. And let's see what we've got. So this is a fantastic way to learn tips and tricks on how to use it. That plus seven plus 12 there was awesome. So you can see what it's done. They've made one big note. Uh, so you join, don't forget you join notes together by double clicking them. If I double click this, uh, this bar here, uh, it's quite easy to find yourself kind of doing it and then thinking I've gone wrong, what have I done? And you start kind of second guessing yourself, but you know, it is what it is. Then we can sync the entire arpeggiator pattern to a MIDI groove. Now, the manual goes on for some length about how this integrates beautifully with Stylus RMX, which I don't own, but I do have plenty of MIDI files. So, so I'm in the media bay over here. It's difficult for you to see, there it is. You just pick a MIDI file up, drop it onto this uh, button down here, and there's my MIDI file loaded in. So now it will play the arpeggio according to the pattern specified by the rhythm of this MIDI file. And you can see the little blue dots denote where the notes will be played. So if I take that same rhythm and drop it onto a MIDI track as well, so I've just quickly set up uh, a drum sound. It's a pretty horrible drum kit, but it'll do for the purpose of the demo. And then for the arpeggio, I want to set it in song position. So it's basically going to sync the playing of the arpeggio along with the drum rhythm. And I'll let it get to an arbitrary point. And it just kind of catches up and immediately syncs in. So those two things are playing rhythmically, sympathetically now. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. Once you've got something that you like, if you like the sound of it, you can actually capture an output. So if I click this little grayed out capture button, you can specify how many bars of the rhythm you want to capture. So let's say eight bars. And you can see it's now um, red and pulsing. It's waiting for me to press some keys on the keyboard and then it will record. Let's make it four bars so it's not quite so tedious. Once it's finished recording, the light will go out. And there we go, recording finished. Now I can pick that pattern up and drop it wherever I want. And we've got basically a MIDI representation of those notes that have been played. So now if I pick a different instrument, let's load up, uh, I don't know. CS80. Drag that pattern over and let's see what we've got. It's actually recorded. It's recorded the pitch bends. Have a look at the MIDI data. And there's our MIDI pitch bend data. Sadly, it doesn't go to automation. I wish it would. Uh, just note loaded a, a better rhythm in to give you a, a better demonstration of the strength slider. So this determines how much the groove is locked. So we've got one that's got um, quite a lot of variance in the rhythmic pattern here. A bit quiet. Pull the strength down. We go back to the, the straight arpeggio again. Press clear, get rid of all that stuff, throwing all of your groove lock away. Back to your standard arpeggio again. While the arpeggio is playing, you can press reset at any time, that will trigger the arpeggio from the beginning again. Turn latch off, arpeggio stops. One of the better implementations of arpeggiators you'll ever find. This thing is absolutely magnificent. 
just get stuck in and start playing with these controls and seeing what kind of things you can come up with. It's almost impossible not to, not to come up with really cool, interesting sounds. It's just incredibly easy. Great fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications. Catch you for the next one. Thanks a lot.